Welcome to the last session of uh, data analysis and visualization module. So the next part, your favorite method is called principal component analysis, okay? So if you recall, uh, we defined principal component analysis is a linear dimensionality reduction technique in which we transform variables or features of a large data set, which we call multivariate data, into a smaller one that still contains most of the information in the large data set. So reducing data by projecting geometrically into a lower dimensions, which we call principal components. So that's why we call projection technique, okay? PCA, NMF, uh, and any techniques that reduce the dimensions of your data set, it's called projection technique, okay? And specifically when projecting, we are talking about the coordination system that we have. It's a little bit changes uh, in the coordination system uh, would be uh, uh, the concept of uh, the meaning of uh, projection. Okay, so and uh, I explained the details of this examples. Uh, eating in the UK, uh, we had four samples uh, or observation. In this case, we have four countries: England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and a number of features here. So, and uh, the question was. Uh, if we could actually use PCA, principal component analysis, in which uh, can differentiate these countries or this observation uh, according to these features. So what, is, what are these features? These features are the average consumption of 17 types of food in grams per person per week. And not to mention that this is 1997. Uh, data, UK food consumption. So perhaps currently there would be some uh, differences in the values of these uh, features. So we have some interesting variations across different food types, and uh, but overall differences are not uh, uh, recognizable. We cannot say exactly which country is different from uh, another or from the rest. So that's why we applied. We said that PCA can actually uh, do this by reducing the dimensions of the data set. If you remember, the data set in the numerical values in the table, tabular format is this one. I show you in a histogram base. Uh, and then we were looking for a technique to reduce the data set and we mentioned that PCA, principal component analysis, can do this analysis for us. All of these features can be summarized or projected into three main principal components. And as you can see, we have same observation, but reducing in the number of features. We will get a new coordination system, which we call principal component. Okay, so, but as you can see, the values of uh, the data set will change when you're reducing or projecting the data set using PCA or NMF. So, and then uh, introducing different functions and uh, principal component for those who are doing the uh, programming uh, questions. So be careful that we using transpose here. It means if because the input data set actually the columns are samples or object observation and the features are uh, rows. So that's why we use transpose in which we put it the data set in the format of columns feature or variables and rows as samples okay that's why we use so and, and again not to mention that for 
large data set we actually playing with these variables and you can check your PCA result by changing these parameters to see which parameter values would be suitable for your case okay so this is something that nobody can say this is the best you have to try different parameters okay okay when we got the principal component and specifically uh, for this part cumulative proportion uh, for principal component one two three as you can see after Principal component three, uh, we will get 100% of cumulative variances for three principal components. So in this case, this actually shows that, this shows that by using three principal components, we will get 100% of uh, variation of uh, cumulative variation. So we don't need PCA4 in, if we want to use uh, these values for uh, further analysis. So and then we uh, plotted this principal component values in a, uh, a one axis, the PCA1, the first axis, and as you can see, even principal component one by itself separated Northern Ireland from the rest of the countries according to just the first variable or the first feature of uh, the new coordination system. So and then when we added the second principal component. So uh, as you can see, this uh, nicely separated the Northern Ireland from these three countries in terms of uh, features, 17 uh, food type consumption values. So, and from this plot, you can easily say that principal component analysis acted like unsupervised learning technique because it can identify the underlying structure of the data set. It can actually separate observation. It can uh, uh, act like a clustering technique. Okay. So and when we look at the uh, interpretation of the principal component, uh, uh, we realize that uh, Northern Ireland with these features are uh, really different uh, in uh, consumption of the foods for these specific features. For instance, for fresh potato, compared to the rest of them, uh, you can see the big differences. So anyway, so what I'm gonna conclude here is principal component is a, a linear dimensional theory reduction technique, not to mention that we have nonlinear PCA as well, which rather uh, a stronger uh, ability for the projection. However, uh, uh, for our cases, actually we use just linear uh, PCA and in which uh, dimensions or uh, number of features actually reduced to a limited number and also we mentioned that this is a type of projection which uh, uh, created a new coordination system so when you in terms of the in terms of the programming uh, perspective so when you getting a PCA of a specific data set, you will get usually for a large data set and large number of features, you will get the same number of principal components as the number of regional features, okay? So, and then based on the uh, cumulative uh, proportion of variances that you're expecting to get, you need to select a number of principal components of your uh, results. So, and it's again based on different analysis, analytics, uh, getting the number of principal components and the percentage would be uh, different, okay? So principal components is access or the underlying structure in the data. Principal components are the directions as a definition 
where the date where there is the most variance or the direction where the data is most spread out so and then we uh, i provided this example in terms of uh, how can we calculate the variances the distances between uh, each observation and the standard lines uh, and etc so definition of eigenvalues and eigenvector so eigenvector we mentioned is the direction of the line and eigenvalue is a number telling us how to what extent the data actually is spread out on the line so this was a basic example of two variables and corresponding principal component of the data and this is the first principal component which includes the most variances uh, in the direction of this principal component actually is in the direction of most uh, variables uh, uh, variances of the data and this is the second uh, principal component uh, correspondingly so and as we realize from the uh, the whole module and the practicing the uh, the programming that you have done principal component analysis mostly actually uh, is used for the visualization and specifically for high dimensional data when you have 440 features uh, for instance for the clustering uh, for the first and second question of individual course for two I ask to visualize the data so you apply the appropriate uh, principal component analysis function and uh, for instance for the question two I ask to use a clustering technique consensus which I'm going to actually uh, provide you some guidance later and then after getting the clustering result you can actually uh, visualize or color the samples uh, visualize using PCA so PCA actually in this case allows you to uh, see the differences of groups clusters uh, and etc in just maximum three uh, principal uh, components okay So this is a, a summary, emphasize variation, variation, and can reveal a strong patterns in the data set, not always, but uh, depends. Uh, it's often used to make data easy to explore. Uh, it's an unsupervised learning method and is similar to clustering in uh, different situations. It could consider, it could be considered as compression method because it reduces the uh, number of features and each feature could be considered as a different dimensions okay if you have more than three features in your data set it could be very difficult to uh, visualize right mm -hmm. these are just uh, some visualization of principal component so this is uh, one of the best a visualization of four subgroups which uh, I obtain using a consensus NMF clustering and then visualize and then coloring by uh, the clustering result and then visualizing using uh, three principal component component one two three and you can see in terms of separation of the samples these are samples from four different uh, main subgroups in medulloblastoma is a uh, childhood brain tumor and is nicely actually show the group one which is a uh, benign actually uh, brain tumor group uh, rather in distance with between group three and group four and group two and again interestingly group three group four have rather somehow uh, similar characteristics that that's why in, uh, after a reliable 
consistent clustering, uh, we uh, obtain the results uh, of these samples nearly uh, to each order. Okay. So, Thank you.